The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophet and stoned those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together, as a hand gathered the chicks under her wings, and you are not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of Christ. So last week, last Sunday, I started uh, a mini-series on the theme of habits of the heart. That's what I was calling it, habits of the heart. These are good practices that we nurture in ourselves so they become so much a part of us that they just kind of kick in automatically when, uh, when they are needed. So last week I talked about the habit of praise, both praising others in our lives and around us, and praising God. Today, I will be talking about a word some of you might not even have heard of before. And that word is this. Lament. Lament. This may sound weird to speak of lament as a habit. So let's talk about this for a moment. None of us gets through life without grief and suffering at multiple points. Some of these moments are actually so strong or last so long, we wonder, like, where are you, God, in this? Where is God? These can be, like, all kinds of things, as we all know. Long periods of illness, long periods of unemployment, moments of tragedy. Uh, and we all know that you know, suffering and grief is a part of, a common part of life. Cultures, for instance, handle grief differently. So we don't all handle it all the same way. So for instance, uh, in terms of you know, grief over, uh, say, a loved one passing. Uh, I come from British stock, and so culturally, you know, we don't show grief. Or we limit the amount of w to which we show grief. Uh, so for instance, at a funeral, for instance, and so forth. But other cultures express grief differently. So I remember the first time I ever went to um, a, well, a, a sort of a wake in India. So a friend took me to his neighbor's house and where um, the person was in an open casket in their living room. And as we're walking down the street to the house, I could hear all this wailing. And I was thinking, oh, where's that coming from? What's that about? Not knowing that it was at the house where we were going. It got stronger and stronger as I got there. And the house is full of people just making this, this, this wailing uh, sound. Many cultures actually grieve in that way. Such a contrast in, in how differently different cultures um, just ex express grief. So we have different ways of, uh, of, of grieving. But grief is not just over death, is it? It can be over loss of any kind, any kind of loss will bring a sense of grief. And then along with grief, certain types of loss can actually bring us a sense of anger. Leave us feeling angry, especially if the loss has involved some kind of injustice to us. When I was younger, I remember my parents losing a, a court case against a contractor. And I remember my dad's uh, anger, and my dad was a very mild fellow, and this, so this was what kind of mildly expressed anger. But nonetheless, I saw anger with my dad so rarely that this, I remember, I remember this. And my dad's sense of anger was at his feeling of an unjust decision uh, made by the judge. And so sometimes our grief or sense of loss can be accompanied by other feelings such as anger. 
There are times in our grief or loss that we are actually angry with God. And this is where that word lament comes in. It describes how we express ourselves with God in the midst of grief and loss. So this morning I'm going to give us a three-part biblical definition of lament. In the first part you can see here, a deep and passionate expression of grief and even protest to God. See, in the Bible, lament often includes protest to God that such and such happened. How, God, could you allow this terrible thing to happen? And I don't know if you noticed it this morning, but all three of our scripture readings this morning were readings of lament, texts of lament. So, first of all, we heard Job 3, in which, I don't know if you picked this up, Job laments that he was even born. He laments, he regrets, he's angry about the fact of even being born. Oh God, I wish I'd never even been born. Why did you allow my birth? You know, lament doesn't get much deeper than that. Then we heard Psalm 79, in which the writer deeply laments the death and destruction that has come to Judah, upon Judah, from, and, and also Jerusalem in Israel, from war, from being invaded. No different than what we see in parts, you know, parts of Ukraine, in Bakhmut, or parts of Myanmar today. The destruction of, uh, you know, of, of settlements and cities by war. And that's what uh, our psalm this morning was lamenting. In fact, about 40%, fully 40% of psalms are lament psalms, psalms of lament. That's a remarkably large percentage. Now, let me break those down. Some laments are individual laments, and some laments are communal event, uh, laments. So individual ones are lamenting, like, what has happened to me or the circumstances I'm going through. And communal is about what our community is going through. And so this morning we heard uh, <clears throat> these words from Psalm 79. This is a communal lament. God, the nations have invaded us. They have defiled your holy temple. They have reduced Jerusalem to rubble. Our attackers have left the deceased bodies of your people in the streets as food for the birds of the sky, the flesh of your own people for the animals of the wild. How long, O oh Lord? How long do we have to go through this? How long till you rescue us, O oh God? So that's an example of communal lament. Psalm 69, so 10 psalms earlier from what we heard this morning, provides a psalm of individual lament. And in this case, the psalm writer, which this, 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 uh, for Psalm 69 is King David, he is suffering at the hands of his enemies. He's got lots of enemies. And David cries, how long must I suffer like this, O Lord? So King David describes himself in that psalm as being up to his neck in water. <laughs> So we can figure out what that means. He feels like he's drowning. But actually, in ancient Near Eastern culture, water was associated not only with drowning, uh, <clears throat> but also with just with chaos in general. You remember at the beginning of Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, existence is, is, is just this watery chaos. And so when he cries out, when David cries out that he's up to his neck in water, it's not only that it means that he, he feels like he's close to drowning from, it, from his, his sufferings, but it just, it's describing the chaos he feels all around him. When, oh Lord, are you going to rescue me from this situation, the loss of control? So he's crying out to God, and for so long, feeling no response from God. Verse 3, David cries out to God saying, I am worn out. I am worn out calling for you to help, oh God. My eyes fail looking for my God. This is classic lament. And I bet that almost every one of us in this room has felt like this at some point in life. For many of us, this will sound familiar, not simply because we've read it in the past in Scripture, but because we feel like we have had those moments, perhaps more than once in our life. And so the specific problems David's ex 
encountering in that psalm, for instance, or the others, are not usually described because the psalms serve as templates for prayer for later worshipers who have similar issues. And in fact, there's not just you know, the Psalms of Lament. There's a whole book called Lamentations, a whole book just on lament. So then after we heard the Psalm this morning, we heard Matthew 23, these words. And this is Jesus himself lamenting. Okay? Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those who sent you, how often I have longed to gather your children together, just as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you were not willing. That's one occasion of lament by Jesus himself. And then perhaps the most uh, powerful moment of lament for Jesus on the cross when he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So the fact that lament is so widely found in the Bible is spiritually really important. Old Testament scholar Christopher Wright, Chris Wright says this, God lets the people have their full say. This is unlike any other ancient Near Eastern literature and religion where the people are merely toys or servants of the gods. They certainly have no right to complain. Yahweh, however, the God of Israel, gives the right to protest and doesn't shut that down. God has no problem with us expressing our emotional honesty. Indeed, God invites us to express that. Now let's go on to the next couple parts of our definition. So, <clears throat> lament is a deep and passionate expression of grief and even protest to God along with petition for rescue from this situation. And the third part is this. After that, petitioning, followed by words of ultimate trust, continuing trust, and praise to God. And so lament, whenever we read it in Scripture, has these uh, three elements to it, this threefold pattern. So, now, earlier I mentioned that 40% of the Psalms are Psalms of lament. Someone studied the, uh, the use of psalms in both uh, the psalms, so that 40%, and in uh, traditional hymns and contemporary music, contemporary worship music, and found that only about 18% of hymns and contemporary music contain lament. So 40 versus, versus 18. So some suggest this is a sign that the church today does not pay enough attention to lament. And why would that be? Well, I think one reason is one that we can give thanks for because uh, it's, we have the immense blessing of simply living in a much more stable society, more secure society than in biblical times. And so we have less frequent occasion in our society on which to invoke prayers of, and music of lament. So actually, it's a sign that we are, have immense blessing. And so do we recognize the immense blessing that we have? So, the church, though, today may have gone too far the other way. And we've lost, have we lost the ability to even express lament and recognize the importance, the spiritual importance of that for us? Back to Christopher Wright for a moment. He says this. The absence of lament in churches today is a big loss to us. We have quietly airbrushed large parts of the Bible from our consciousness. We sing songs based on the Psalms, but often leave out the bits about suffering or oppression. We ignore that in the Psalms. Uh, sorry, uh, we ignore that in the Psalms, lament or protest to God is the largest category. So much of our worship today, he says, is cover-up. Much of our worship today is cover-up, he says. Pretending to have positive emotions we might not really have, or smothering the emotions we feel. So it's a call to, to emotional honesty. Psalms and lamentations 
Invite us to emotional honesty with God. And the honesty is to be in both our individual prayer as individuals and in our collective prayer when we gather for public worship. So, let me ask you right now. What do you lament right now? Now, you may not have come here this morning feeling, you know, I'm really lamenting such and such. But in our lives, there are parts, or in the world around us, about which we do indeed grieve. About which we are indeed deeply sad about. About which we may even be angry with God. And so, let me ask you, what do you lament right now? Whether at individual levels for yourself or collective uh, levels. And we're going to pass the mic on this. Hmm? To hear from you. What do you lament right now? So, for visitors, uh, passing the mic like this is something we, uh, we, ca- we regularly do. Uh, and Wentworth is going to be our mic passer this morning. And so, uh, let me get us started on this. I'm going to give you a lament I'm carrying this morning. And then we'll, uh, we'll open up the mic for to hear from some of us here. I saw a headline yesterday in the news. Maybe some of you saw this, that last year, half a million Germans left the Roman Catholic Church. Why? Principally over the loss of trust in the church due to sex abuse scandals. I lament, I deeply grieve and protest to God, the pain inflicted on so many by abusive church leaders. And other types of leaders as well, but especially church leaders. The pain of abuse by church leaders is my lament this morning. And so I'm, we're going to open up the mic for a few, few of you to, to say, what laments do you bring in your heart this morning? I see Mina, and then I saw Alex. It's not a day go by that I don't think of the sense this morning when you pray. It hurts a lot. It really hurts me. Because it, I, I didn't hear anything about the, the country being at war. And, and all these countries, they join NATO, they join this, they join that. And it's like nothing comes of it. It's people lives. They're just killing the people. And it, and it hurts, mm. especially when you, you run into some that feed to the country, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Thank you, Mina. I saw Alex's hand and then Gregory's hand. I'll uh, continue that thought from Mina that in war and Ukraine, which is a horrible thing as you see quite a bit of attention, but there are also other conflicts going on in several African countries and even other places that we, you know, you see almost no mention in the news mm-hmm. unless something really horrible happens and, and you get people having to live with, with these ongoing conflicts for right. extended periods of time. There's not much attention paid to them. Yep, absolutely. Thank you, Gregory. It's a double-barreled one for me. Um, State of the environment and the fact that we've had plenty of warning and yet we still can't seem to get anywhere, which is tied into the fact that we can't seem to get anywhere anymore because we're so entrenched on, if you don't agree with me, you're a moron and I hate you. Thank you, Alex. Yep, I'm sure. Debbie here at the front. I'm a visitor, so thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, I think my, my lament is the oldest one there can be, and is why are we still having uh, starving people in the world, uh, the haves and have-nots. Thank you, Debbie. Celine, at the front. Uh, 
this is more personal. We have a, I have a close family friend. Her 18-year-old passed away a few weeks ago because of mental illness. And I think there's a deep grief at the shock of his death, but there's also a deep lament because it happened in BC, a lament for myself to not be there. Mm -hmm. So the grief is, yeah, there's multiple layers to that sometimes. Wow. Thank you, Celine, for sharing that. I do lament for all the things that were mentioned this morning, but at the moment, I grieve for the loss of my brother and, and my sister, especially she is younger than me and she died suddenly, six, seven months ago. So I grieve for that this morning and I lament this loss. Thank you, Yusuf. So Yusuf has lost two siblings in recent months. Thank you, Yusuf. I thought I saw one more hand. Okay. Thank you, Wentworth, for that. So let me f add some closing words. Thank you to each of you for, for sharing those words. So following Chris Wright's words, what does it look like to include more lament in, in our public worship? Well, it could mean naming our laments out loud in prayer time. And that would include kind of all three elements of, of lament, naming the grief and protest to God, about a specific thing. Then asking God to intervene. Come Lord Jesus, come Holy Spirit. And then expressing our ultimate trust and praise to God, even though we may not understand. If you were here last Sunday, you'll recall that we did our prayer differently than usual. We stood for prayer last Sunday and we prayed aloud our prayers of praise to God. And so this morning, we're going to do something similar. Uh, though with an aspect we've never done before, which is to make our time of prayer focused specifically on lament. So last week, we focused on praise. This morning, we're focusing on lament. So like last Sunday, I'm going to ask us in a moment to stand for our time of prayer. Standing is an ancient Jewish and Christian posture for prayer. And like we did last Sunday, our time of prayer this morning, I'm going to invite you to say, say aloud your prayers of lament. No mic, just from your spot. And so now I invite you to please stand and pray as you feel moved. And I, I will begin. Heavenly Father, it makes me angry that so many people have suffered under church leaders and leaders of, of other kinds who have abused their authority and power, whether this has been through physical or sexual or emotional, uh, emotional abuse, there is much pain, O oh Lord. I ask, Heavenly Father, that you would bring healing to those who suffer as victims of abuse. And I praise you, Lord, for our ultimate hope is in you. And now we are going to lament our own failings and the harms we ourselves have done. And so we are going to now turn to a time of confession as we remain standing. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. Let us lament and confess how we ourselves have missed God's mark, confident in God's forgiveness and restoration.